Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, I'm just gonna go through a couple of the new features in the 2.6 beta. I'm not gonna go through the Forge Dynamics stuff. There is so much new stuff in Dynamics that's just gonna have to be a separate thing. So I'll go through the Lattice and the four-point warp and then the Mesh Solver in this one. Um, so um, I've, in this scene, I have a UV checker and some text. Uh, the reason for the UV checker will become apparent in a moment. Um, I'm gonna start by showing the four-point warp, which is a very simple deformer. Just add it as a normal deformer. And when you select the layer, in the stack you'll see that there is a viewport tool for this and you can just click and drag the points in the viewport tool to adjust um, the, uh, the the warp uh, the warp points and so um, with this you can just move the bezier points around and make yourself an interesting whoops missed it uh, make yourself an interesting shape and uh, already you can see you know we can um, deform a path in a way that it was would have been very tedious to do before the existence of this uh, deformer. Okay, so in the UI, there's uh, all of these points have attributes, and so you can animate all of them. So you can animate uh, whatever effects you want here, and obviously you've got the strength as well. So you can turn the effect on and off. And um, there is this mesh mode. So what does the mesh mode do? Okay, so let's go back to uh, the text here, and if I just drag this UV checker onto the fill tab and then release it on shaders, um, you'll see that we've applied the um, We've applied that UV checker texture to the text, um, although uh, we want fit cover, not fit contain. And um, with that done, let's go back into the four point warp. And if I move these uh, points around, you'll see that kind of the texture is not sticking to the deformed uh, path. And the way to get it to do that is to turn on this mesh mode. So if we just click that, you'll see now, once the mesh mode is on, I can move these points around and the texture is just sticking uh, correctly to the geometry. So that's what mesh mode is for. It's to kind of make your textures, your uh, gradient shaders, whatever you've got, um, kind of glue glue itself to the um, to the, the geometry of the path. Okay, uh, so that is uh, four point warp. Um, next, the lattice. So let's just add the lattice and then uh, by default, the lattice is a th like a three by three. What you do is, is again, it's like the um, like the uh, four point warp. Um, only there are more points to manipulate. So uh, when you select, you can marquee select these points. Uh, you can then get a manipulator. You can move these points around if you want to. You can scale them. You can do whatever you like with them. Um, and we get a handy manipulator to do this. So that's fun. Um, okay, so let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's say let's add uh, like I don't know. 40 of these things um, and then uh, what we can do is um, we want to say uh, manipulate um, all of these kind of points over here let's like make an animation where we kind of reveal the reveal the hello um, by um, uh, animating animating the, the points in um, so you can either keyframe all of these points now that's a lot of points to keyframe or you can just add a controller and then you just get to set one set of keyframe so uh, what we're going to do is with this selection uh, we're going to hit add controller to selection then when we select the controller, again, we have a manipulator and you'll notice that we can move all of these points. If I double click to load this UI, you can load all of these points and um, you see that we're just adjusting one attribute here, which is the kind of controller. So if I can actually just move that in the attribute editor instead of the viewport, you'll see what's going on here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna set a couple of keyframes. So let's set a keyframe here and we'll set the position zero and then we'll set a keyframe, a very big keyframe, something like, I don't know, that. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, right click on the uh, first keyframe, I'm going to go magic easing and I'll set, well I set, I'm going to set bounce out. Um, and then um, just, so that's what's going to happen. Um, but I want the text to be in the middle, so I want it, um, I'm going to go up to the, I'm going to select the text, go up to the shelf and hit the um, align behavior button. And um, I just need to make the lattice controller um, bigger for the first frame, like this. And then when I hit play, that's what we get. Cool. Okay, so with the lattice deformer, you can do cool kind of text effects, or you can do whatever you want. There's just obviously it's just a lattice deformer, so it can be used to do anything. Um, but this is just one egg example. Okay, cool. Again, the lattice deformer has the same mesh mode that um, the four point warp does, so uh, textures can stretch and all that kind of thing. Just uh, click this mesh mode to turn that on. Um, the lattice also has its own deformers. Actually, this is probably worth showing. <laughs> um, I'm going to remove the controller uh, for now. So if I um, just go onto the deformers here and hit something like, um, oh, I know what I'll show. I know what I'm going to do. Um, so actually, I'll get rid of this. I'm just going to get rid of everything. So I'm going to make a path for us here. Something like that. 
I'm going to drag the UV checker in and then on the UV checker I will well, just select the transform tool uh, and then I'm going to add this lattice deformer and um, then on the lattice deformer I'm going to set the grid count to 9 by 9 which gives us um, uh, that gives us a, a point for every UV coordinate square. Uh, I'm going to turn on mesh and so when I select these uh, these points here and I move them you see that the texture is deforming. Okay so this is really important for what we're going to do. So I'm going to show off the deformers here. Um, so the first things first is I'm going to add like what I want to, to happen is I want the um, this texture to go around this path that we've built here. Um, so in order to do that first of all I'm going to need to shrink it because it's way too big to um, go around uh, to go around the path as it is. So I could select all of these things and I could shrink the lattice like this uh, of course that's you know uh, problematic if you want to adjust the sizes later which is very tedious so this being cavalry there's an easy way to do it and um, you can just go in and add a manipulated deformer and then if we uh, just shrink down the size of it then that's great and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a pathfinder behavior like so on a pathfinder behavior we need to drag our editable shape in the thing that we drew we just need to drag that into the input shape here and then you'll see that the um the uh uv checker footage is um uh has been added to the path and then we can travel the uv footage down the path and you'll see that the uv footage is deforming as we go around the path so you can uh, deform images kind of along paths in this way which is really neat Okay, cool. Right, so that's kind of deformers. You can also, there's other deformers that work with the lattice. Um, we'll add more and more, but uh, for now, there's like bend, flare, uh, noise, oscillator. Random, round, whatever, skew. That's it, squash and stretch, then we're done. Um, we'll add some more, but um, for now, hopefully that keeps you busy. Um, okay, so let's start a new scene. I'm gonna show you the um, mesh, uh, the mesh solver now. So let's just give ourselves a couple of characters of text. Uh, what should I use? Um, El Vulcan, let's use this font here. Um, and I'm gonna make this larger, centralize it, make it black. Okay, so what is what? What's this mesh solver? What's this mesh solver all about? Okay, there's a couple of. I'm going to show you a couple of use cases. One, the first one, I'm going to show you is a drawing machine. Um, so uh, we have some text here, and I'm going to add a segment path uh, shape. And what this is is it cuts paths into different uh, sections. So let's. If I just drag my text onto the input shapes here, um, and if I just slide up extend you'll see that we're kind of extending this path because we've cut it into different chunks if i kind of set, reset this back to zero you'll see that we've made we've cut each path into 10 chunks because uh, we've got a count of 10 here if i change this to automatic cuts what that means is that everywhere that there was a point existing on the path we then make a cut there so now if i do an extension you'll see actually if i just change back to the transform tool so there's not as many things on the screen you'll see that um uh, we're kind of we're cutting in line with the, uh, the the geometry um rather than kind of like halfway down edges and stuff like that so um we're gonna just turn this off because we're going to do um we're going to add ourselves a mesh solver to this uh, so if we just go to deformers here and add mesh solver like this if I hit play, nothing happens. Uh, but what I can do, just like by just as a like a really simple example, I'm going to add an extend open paths um, deformer, and I'm going to turn extend start off, and I'm going to turn extend end like down really low. And then when I push play, we're just going to kind of grow the path according to the path tangent. So um, this is kind of uh, a, like a yeah, the, the animation is a simulation effectively. Um, so instead of path tangent we can do path curvature and i'm going to need to if, I, to if i make the opacity on this much lower and then i push play you'll see that <laughs> actually this is a bad example the curves are really really tight on this maybe uh that's a bad example for this one uh we've got arc which i'm going to leave for now and then we've got custom so a custom direction is um just uh whatever the direction is set on these two uh, attributes here and at the moment it's just set to up so all of these paths are animating up um however what we can do is we can put a behavior in here because this is cavalry so we can right click we can go add behavior and let's for example add a noise in here so by default we now get this okay uh fairly interesting um however if i do minus 360 360 in here and then i hit play again you'll see that we get uh, this kind of interesting drawing machine going on um and uh of course we can animate this so let's set a keyframe on frame say 20 
um, uh, with 100 and then go back to frame zero and set this to zero um, and then we animate this so we go up to start with and then we have curly bits uh, which is quite fun so we've made ourselves a little drawing machine here and then obviously um, we can uh, do things like add some curl noise um, just worth noting that when you make changes to the simulated to the simulation you won't see those changes until you rerun the simulation so just be aware of that so um with the curl noise turned on we kind of get lots of big and then much smaller detailed kind of things going on so um if i go back to the segment path here which is where the stroke is and i can say for example turn the stroke width down and say turn on uh, tapering um, I won't see any of those changes again like I said because I need to rerun the simulation so we can turn on taper strokes and we can turn on um, uh, we'll lower, lower the width and then you know you can get this kind of interesting drawing machine type thing so this is one use of the of the mesh solver uh, which is really cool really really like this um, so let's see another use we'll start with the uh, we'll start with the same um, characters um, I'll just change that opacity back up to, to full and then uh, we'll add the mesh solver uh, directly to the text this time. Whoops, go back to the first frame. And on the mesh solver this time, what we will do is I'll add a path relax. What this is going to do is going to move the points away from each other. So you can see them kind of like moving away. And that's it really, because the, what we're trying to do, the points are trying to basically get 50 uh, pixels apart um, and they move one pixel um per uh, frame uh, once uh, so the situations can basically we can keep trying to work out uh, tr keep trying to move those points um, away from each other um, so that's how many attempts per frame to get the 50 pixels apart basically okay so um, with this done um, what we could do is we can then average these positions so let's just um, average them out so kind of um, <laughs> when you when you just uh, when you just do this you kind of it's kind of you get this weird kind of organic transition thing so you can actually scrunch these things into nothing um if i were to make more iterations of that then that would happen more quickly there you go so you can kind of like make a weird organic transition doing this kind of thing however some magic happens if we then do something like add and add divisions in here and if we add divisions and change it from number of divisions to like edge length i can leave that at 20 for now we're I just actually, sorry, I need to take the number of iterations on this back down. So you can see that we're kind of like doing this weird kind of um, bulbous effect, growing effect. Now, something to be aware of is that these shapes are colliding with each other, which is not great. So what we can do on the text is, um, so I've loaded the text settings again. I'm going to add a flatten shape layers here, and then I'm just going to move that below so that the shape gets flattened and then put into the mesh solver which means that these letters will now interact with each other when we hit play like th this so they're kind of like trying to stay away from each other um so let's on this path relax uh, let's um give this more more uh, iterations okay so now you'll see the effect that we're getting is really quite cool um and with this kind of more like um while we're like making more of an effort to to do this uh, relaxation um we can now put our iterations for our path average up as well and this can give us kind of like more larger areas and then more detailed areas and all this kind of thing and so basically um you get this cool growing effect uh, differential line growth is um like the the term usually used for this um but it's really really cool and so this done what we can do with our um text here is we can just add a subdivide onto the end of it like so and so when we play this back it's okay actually on the subdivide i'm just gonna put a bit of a smooth angle on this okay so then if i play that's a pretty fun effect okay anyway so that's three new things in cavalry 26 beta i hope you all have fun uh let us know what you think um it is a beta so it's liable to change but um yeah i hope you you find it fun and i'll see you in the next vid